this DC DC converter was working quite happily for about a, a year, and uh, uh, the other day it it failed. Um, it was powering uh, an antenna and uh, an Ethernet switch. Um, the unit itself is supposed to be up to 120 watts. We were taking 12 volts in from a solar panel and boosting it up to 24 volts for the for the equipment. Uh, this little guy is based upon the UC3843 chip, which is uh, on the on the bottom there. Uh, very popular chip. It's uh, been around, I think, since uh, since the the mid 80s, and uh, it's uh, very reliable generally. Um, possibly the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed what possible issue there is with this already. Uh, but just like to investigate the, uh, the the failure mode and uh, see if we can repair it. Now, if I put um, 12 volts into this, you can see that going in there. Now, with no load, the thing seems to 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 function okay. So we've got 24 volts out. Up here, I've got a, a power resistor which I've set to 50 ohms. So the original equipment was drawing approximately half an amp so um, the, uh, the the current is obviously 24 volts over 50 ohms so it's half a half an amp now if we switch the load on you can see that the, the LED dims and uh, the output drops um, significantly so that's the issue that we we have now um, by visual inspection and you've probably noticed it already yourselves this capacitor here um, appears to be to be damaged. Uh, we'll get a closer look at that, I think, with the with the microscope. Here's the top of the uh, faulty capacitor that I've removed from the circuit board now, and uh, there's a clear clear rupture of the of the top of the unit, and it seems strange to me. Um, it looks to me as if this uh, capacitor has had some physical damage, um, possibly in transit or whatever, I don't know. But there's, um, there's definitely uh, significant marks on it. This is another, another indentation there. Just there. So it's uh, definitely duff. Uh, if we look at the at the base of it, as well, unusually, um, that seems to be swollen. That's not not normal. Um, the normal sort of failure mode of these capacitors. Uh, here's here's another example. Um, is that the top um, bows out and then the thing ruptures, and you can see that the the electrolyte has 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 come out there. And on this one, the uh, the, the base is flat and. Uh, Last example here, this is another little guy, and again the top is visibly bowed and it's, it's not, not particularly easy to see on this one but there is electrolyte le leaking out of it and just flipping it over, uh, the base of that one looks reasonably flat. So uh, yeah, this capacitor um, is definitely definitely dead, the, the original one. Uh, that's another observation here. This um, this K mark uh, could be a clue as well. Um, there are many many um, fake and, uh, and and dodgy capacitors that are, are, are manufactured um, very very poorly, and quite often they do bear this K marking um, as opposed to the cross. As well as the visual inspection, we can obviously test the, the capacitance. So on this meter here, if we go over to the capacitance uh, range. Now this is the, the dodgy cap here and the other one is exactly the same uh, value. So it should be a thousand microfarads at 35 volts. So if we measure, uh, this is the, the good guy. 
So, uh, 1083, let's just do that again. Yeah, so we're in the, in the sort of right ballpark. And this is the uh, suspect device. So it's, it obviously is doing something strange. The capacitance is uh, a lot higher than it, than it should be. And uh, we know that this device is suspect, but just measuring the capacitance uh, doesn't always give us the full story, uh, especially here in the south of Spain, where the, the temperatures are, uh, are normally very, very high. Um, we need to check what's called the equivalent series resistance of the of the capacitor it's normally the the giveaway so with this meter here we can we can measure that and we just need to to calibrate it by shorting the the test probes out and then pressing the calibrate button so now we've got zero zero on there now um it's, it does have a hand, handy scale on here um, because the, the equivalent resistance uh, changes uh, with the with the voltage. It also changes with, with temperature, but uh, more or less uh, 20 degrees C, these values should be there or thereabouts. So we've got a 35 volt capacitor and it's at uh, 1000 microfarads. So we should be looking for a reading in the, in the order of 0 0.04. So Again, we go back to our, our circuit and this cap down the bottom uh, on the on the output, 0 0.04. So that's uh, on the money. Now this is the suspect device. And when we probe onto that, nothing at all. It's effectively uh, open circuit. Having replaced the capacitor with, uh, with, a, with a new guy, uh, just a final test on the on the unit. Uh, this meter on the left hand side is measuring the current and this one has before the, the voltage. So once again if we uh, look at the input voltage we've got our, our 12 volts and our 24 volts out. So now we switch in the load we can see it's uh, just a, just under half an amp and we've still got our 24 volts out. So uh, that was a, a relatively straightforward repair, uh, just a thing to watch out for there on these, uh, on these capacitors. As they say that the jury's out as to whether it was a, a bad cap from, from manufacturer or uh, had just been, been damaged. I uh, hope you found that interesting.